XREFs have long been a part of traditional CAD workflows, but this often didn't offer enough functionality for users of tin surfaces. With BricsCAD B25, we've got the ability to create a smart data reference that gives users the best of both worlds. Join me, Linda Sharkey, to learn more about sharing tin surfaces between drawings. It'll take 10 minutes tops, and I promise it won't hurt much. Let's start by opening a drawing that was exported from Leica Infinity. And I'm doing this for two reasons. One, it uh, has multiple tin surfaces in it, as you can see. They're not yet civil objects, but they shall be. Because the second reason I'm showing you this is it gives me the opportunity to show off our one-click Leica import functionality. If you use Leica survey equipment, check out the breakout that we have on this on our website. So I'm going to hit the like convert button. I'm going to delete the original and voila, there we have points, tin surfaces and string groups. Now string groups are new to V25 as well. We also have a breakout session on this. So go and check it out if you're interested. I'm going to switch off the string groups and the point groups, all of our superfluous stuff. And now we have five surfaces, imaginatively named surface one, two, three, four, and five. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna switch off a couple of surfaces, right? We're gonna have surface one, which is down the bottom over here, and surface five, which is the top over here. So we're going to rename these. I'm going to say embed the surface. Okay. And then I'm going to call surface five, link this surface. So now we have a DWG that was converted from Leica. So it was converted from survey data taken in the field. Uh, we've got five surfaces. We've renamed two of them. We're going to save this drawing. And now we're going to start a brand new drawing. There we go. Now you'll notice that there's nothing in here. There's nothing in the Civil Explorer because we haven't put anything in yet. Now, if we were to just XREF a drawing in, so let's go and we'll say, right, there we go. Now we insert it and we zoom to it. We'll see that we have a very messy XREF. And there's nothing that we can do with that. So this is where the new V25 features come in. Instead of XREFing, we are going to attach civil objects. We're going to choose the drawing we just created. And we're going to choose the surfaces that we want. Now we're going to ignore surface two, three, four. We're going to look at embed the surface and link the surface. And you guessed it, they're called that because we're going to embed one and link the other by choosing something from these little drop down arrows. And if you drop down on this little menu, you'll see that there is a tooltip that tells you the difference between embedded and linked. So embedded means that it will be stored in the drawing, saved in the drawing. Uh, the drawing will open faster, but it is larger. Um, and the surface surfaces will be visible even if the source drawing is not available. Linked means just that. It's just the, the reference drawing surface is not saved in a drawing. It is purely a, a reference. So uh, let's attach that. And if we go to our tin surface drop down in our Civil Explorer, we will see we have our two surfaces. Now, you may notice that uh, between our new drawing and our original tin surface sharing drawing, they do look a little bit different, but that is because BricsCAD comes with visual style controls. So we have a drop down that allows you to show either uh, conceptual designs or modeling designs or realistic, and that's why uh, things look a little different. If we check out our Civil Explorer, 
under the tin surfaces, we have our embedded tin surface and our linked tin surface. There you go. Now, if we right click on one of these surfaces, you'll see that there are far fewer options available to us. If we go to the original drawing and uh, right click on one, you'll see that you have the ability to edit, update, uh, you can do much more than just select, zoom to, pan, hide. Um, and that's the beauty of this. We're able to give people access to a single source of truth without having them change things. However, if you have a look at the information about each of these surfaces, you will see that you can still see information, you can see the statistics, and importantly, you can uh, change the visual styles. So for example, um, if I want to look at the linked surface, which is the one that's flashing on and off right now, uh, I'm going to enable the contours um, and I'm going to put on some elevations. Let's change the visual styles so that it displays as triangles. And here we go. If we zoom in, we can see that this particular tin right now looks like a cross between a tin and a Lego block, which is two of my favorite things, really. What we can do now is we can save this drawing. As we mentioned earlier, it's not just the visual styles of the, the tins that you can change. Um, you can add surface labels as well. So let's choose surface labels. You can hit contour. Uh, we're just going to choose the default label style at the moment, choose our tin surface, and then a start and an end point. So, oh my goodness, those look terrible. Now remember, the settings for labels are in the Civil Explorer settings panel. And these are user defined. So you don't have to have these really weird looking labels. You can set these up once, save them in a template and use them many times. Um, remember that the way in which labels are shown are also dependent on uh, what styles you have. So it's completely up to you. Let's switch the elevations back on. Zoom out a little bit. So again, we could add some surface labels. This time, let's go for some slope. Again, just going to choose default. And we can select two points. So choose our surface, select our base point, and select our end point. Now, you may notice that these labels are persistent. So until you hit Enter, it's going to continue to keep looking for a base point. So um, if I go from here to here and uh, from here to here, they're persistent. So they keep asking you to um, add more labels until you hit enter. And then you can start changing things. So that looks a bit weird. But remember, all of these labels are user um, all of these labels are user defined. So don't let my terrible labels here make you think like this is what they have to look like. Now let's save the drawing. It's just plain old drawing one and head back to our original drawing. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to edit uh, the embedded tin. So what should we do? Um, let's delete lines. And we'll just grab some over there. Delete them. And then on the second surface, we're going to remove some points. Zoom in. Might be a little bit easier if we change to a more realistic view. So 
let's remove that one. Let's look over here. Um, that one definitely looks like it should be removed. Uh, let's have a look at these ones as well. So we're just going to go through, we're going to click on the points that we want to remove. And we'll see that this area that looked pretty weird to begin with now looks, well, still weird, but slightly less weird. And we're going to save our drawing. Now, if we go back to the drawing with the tin data references in them, we get a notice in the bottom right hand corner that the modified civil data source files have changed. Ooh, it's kind of ominous. But it is a good thing because basically what it's telling the person who's working with those data references is that the source data has changed. They need to update. So if we hit reload the data sources, we'll see that within our embedded surface, we have the lines that were deleted. And within our linked surface, we can see that our weird area is now less weird. Thank you for joining me on this brief walkthrough of sharing tin surfaces between drawings. We know that XREFs basically are just pictures, but smart data references give us a single source of truth for a project, either by embedding that tin or by linking it. We saw that these smart references showed up in the Civil Explorer in a read-only format that still allowed us to style, label, or use in a civil design, for example, using for grading. And we saw that users were informed when the source tins changed and were prompted to update them. If you want to learn more about the fabulous new functionality in Brooks CAD Pro V25, then head over to our website and check out these other sessions. And as always, we invite you to download the latest version of Brooks CAD and try out all of this awesomeness for yourself. Thanks again for joining me. You guys take care now.